Welcome back, ladies and gentlefolk. We have another M19 draft. Like I said, next week is Cube Draft. Playman Pavel, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Kflix, thank you for the variance bits. Really appreciate it after the last time. I'm going to take this Gravedigger. This pack is pretty decent. We got Bloodletter, a Shock, an Electrify. Uh, I'm not a big, as big as a fan of skilled animator as other people. I think it can have some really, really explosive starts. But I also think sometimes it can be really mediocre as well. Like, if you draw it with no artifacts, eh, it's pretty rough. I'm going to take this Gravedigger because I think it's one of the best creatures in the format, if not the best creature. I also like Rabid Bite. I don't mind either one of these two. I could just take Neonate, stay on, uh, stay on color. I'm probably going to sneeze here. <coughs> thank you for informative streams thank you you have definitely helped me oh thank you so much man really appreciate you saying so that is good to hear uh my thoughts on fraying omnipotence i think it has its moments but i think like skilled animator they're very it's very narrow you have to like find this perfect situation for it um i want to take rabid bite i like green black I'll take another rabbit bite. Look at that. They're just give they're just giving us rabbit bites. They're just giving them away. I like Aviation Pioneer. If we took like a divination, we could actually take Aviation Pioneer here and be on course to be the the blue black deck. But I think rabbit bites pretty top tier. And then nothing in this pack that's any good for us. Surge Mare. Okay. I mean we could splash this because we're greens. We could actually take shock or gallant cavalry. I love Elvish Clan Caller in this set because it actually does very, very little. Like, almost nothing. Uh, I'm not sure if they've released what cube is next week yet, so I I don't know. I don't care. It's a cube. That's all that matters. I think it's probably Shock here. Eh, I'll just take Shock. I actually like Rogue's Gloves more than most, I think. Um, I think this is a format that heavily rewards card advantage, so... Because a lot of the cards are on an even playing field. Like, you, you, you know, it's a core set, so your power level is generally lower. So being able to have something like Rogue's Gloves that helps you refill your hand is pretty nice. Oh, look, a second clan caller. The literal one time, I'm like, well, it's probably not very good because it doesn't do anything. Now we can actually get multiple. Do we just take this one in hopes that we get the other one? A 1-1 one, one for 2 is not great. I don't know why this isn't just a 2-2. Two, two. If this is a 2-2, two, two, it's, like, actually playable and limited. <laughs> oh, the Zendikar cubes. I just said hi to the Tannen Grace in person. That's pretty hilarious. Where are you to do that? That's amazing. I don't know what to take here. Oh, uh, I rarely play in. I'm going to take my Cobalts, I guess. I don't know. Oh my god, a third Elvish Clan Caller? No, now we're taking this one. In the hopes that those other two wheel and we can just have Elvish Clan Caller dot deck. It rained on me, so I got out of my ice cream truck and went to the get. That's hilarious. Tan and Grace is good people. I want to take this Blood Divination. That's hilarious, dude. This guy is an elf, so I think we just take it because we have the clan caller. Foil clan caller, come on back. It's never coming back, is it? Eh, apparatus is playable. Dang it. All these two drops, man. Someone's really gonna someone's really gonna steal our clan callers. Alright, well. That's sad.
Neither of these cards are good. Infernal Reckoning and Infernal Scarring. We got the Infernal Infernal Twofer in the sideboard. Oh, a sigiled sword, eh? Yeah, I'll take that. That's better than the Lich's Caress here. Oh, Hiromancer's Cage is very, very good. It's unfortunate there are no good black or green cards in this pack. <sighs> I don't want a Manolith. I think Talons is actually decent, but god, it's not second pickable for sure. This deck is looking pretty rough. I'm going to take the... Oh god. It's got to be Cage, right? It's got to be Cage. I got to play Tannen almost every week. That's pretty hilarious. Tannen's great. Tannen's like one of the nicest guys in Magic. Oh boy, these packs are miserable. It's just Stag here. Like, Stag is far and away the best card in this pack outside of Heroic Reinforcements, which I don't think is an option for us. I'm just going to take the Stag. I have no idea what this deck is doing right now. Oh. We're already black green. I guess we're doing that thing again. We're doing this five color thing again. Another fraying omnipotence. So I'm going to take the strangling spores. And we can actually play the shock over the, the white cards if we want to. Where are my mana lists at now? Now I'm going to take... Uh, oh, Electrify, actually. Yeah. 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 Mana lists, where you at? Four colors it is, boys. Four color, no blues. And we got some pretty good cards in our deck. Let's put our top tier gems over here like these are all pretty top tier we do have five creatures though so we probably want some uh yeah it's the old four color four drop dot deck a uh, classic Rupture Spire is exactly what I want to see for this deck. Good lord. Nickel Bowl is Durgan, bro. That is a good, that is a solid Durgan. Or Dagron, if you will. There's another four drop. I'm going to take this Timber Gorge. This is actually perfect for us. We can also put the Shock in the deck. 
This is nice because it's uh, red is our splash and green is one of our... Actually, maybe green is one of our splashes. I don't even know anymore. Either way. Hmm. I think Highland Game is better than Pyromancer just for the fact that we want to be able to stay alive longer. So... Uh, I think two drops... Yeah, I think we're probably more base green. Green is the color that's going to allow us to splash these cards, so I really would rather be more base green. Giant Spider is good. I think we actually just want another two drop. Especially when it gains us two life when we sack it to... Ooh, Child of Night. All right. I got unreasonably excited by that Child of Night there. All right, one more pack. Yeah, we could cut white. I mean, we have no reason to write this second, but it is an option. I mean, it's definitely on the table. Yeah, that's a good one. That is a good one. Probably better than Lightning Strike, despite not going to the face. We do have a dragon. Yep, just going to take Spitfire. Spit flame. My bad. My bad. Well, I don't think we're getting past the Nicol Bolas, so. Gravedigger number two or Rupture Spire number two is the question. I think it's actually Gravedigger number two. I can easily cut this two-headed zombie for a second Gravedigger. Plus, I could actually see uh, a Rupture Spire coming back where a Gravedigger, not likely. Graveyard Marshal. Oh, and a Vine Mare? Oh, boy. And a Druid of the Cowl and a Lich's Caress? And these two? How many of these cost four? One, two, three. Three of them cost four. Can you do an even mana cost tip? I'd prefer not to with a, with a core set, uh, just because you're just going to lose. Like, there's no reason to. The power level of core sets is so low anyway that you're just going to be like, you're only hurting yourself. Uh, I don't think it's actually Caress. Um, as far as removal, we have Electrify, Strangling, Spore, Spit Flame, and Shock already. I don't see... And, and Double Rabid Bite. I'd rather have a creature like Vine Mare to make sure we have uses for the Rabid Bites. I would also take a creature like Druid because we have so many 4-drops. I think it's between Druid, Vine Mare, and Grave Marshal. And I think, I think Vine Mare is just super strong, which is why I'm leaning towards it. But I actually think it's Druid here. Rejuvenator is pretty good here. That's actually exactly what we wanted to see. Trash Master. Um, probably just Electrify here. I mean, we can just cut one of the Rabbit Bites. Uh, let's take Electrify. I could see taking the Stone Quarry. Just to splash, like, the Cage or the Stag. I don't hate Abnormal Endurance. Probably taking out Sentinel. Probably taking out one Rabbit Bite if we actually need to. I don't hate Hired Blade just as a 3-drop that can sneak in there. Spazio, you're a weird dude, man. You're a weird dude. Whatever. We have two grave diggers. So I just want to make sure we have creatures. A 
heroic this is a late heroic reinforcements jesus what is it 19 plus 17 was that 36 so this is a seventh pick heroic reinforcements good lord that is late I think it's just Foul Orchard. Might be Giant Spider. Yeah, we're gonna go with Orchard. I'm gonna take the Epic here. We don't actually have any five drops here. <laughs> Good lord. These Brawl Bash Ogres are super late, man. I wanna take the five drop. Actually, this guy's fine. Let's go to his rabbit bite. Okay, well, now you're not getting this one. That is way too late. Whatever, consider doing... I, I, I do Hearthstone streams pretty regularly. I was going to probably do one this week because the new set comes out. So, I guess I wouldn't say pretty regularly, but I do do them. He said doo-doo. I think Endurance is probably better than Titanic Growth, so we're going to take that. Whoa, please don't give away my Turbo Jinzo tech. Okay, that's rude. So this is 24 cards. Probably cut the ogre. We would actually probably cut McCall Balls when we have double grave digger. Oh my god, don't say tops. Hey, did you top? <laughs> oh my god, it's such a Yu-Gi-Oh thing. When I used to edit the I used to get edit the Yu-Gi-Oh articles for TCG player, they would always say that and I would be like, that's so weird. What weird terminology that is. Uh, it never it never hits the graveyard note. It's a replacement effect. I would rather cut my cobalts than gloves. Maybe. Nah, it's probably gloves. <laughs> it's sad. All right, so we got land, land, land. One, two, three, four, five, six, probably going to seven here. Five, six, seven, probably going to six here. Six, seven, eight, probably going to seven here. So four, five, six, seven, four, five, six, five, six, seven. This is a seven, seven, six. What do we need the last of? I guess it is a black, all right. All right, let's see what happens. I do like having McCall Bolts and Double Graves are gonna get back this Vivictus. Uh, I wear glasses right now. I just don't wear them when streaming because I'm nearsighted. So I have no reason to wear glasses when on a computer. As someone with community engine experience, are you comfortable giving a public opinion about the solar showcase and the unintended takeaways that some people took from it? Uh, what do you mean takeaways that some people took from it? What are you what are you referring to specifically there? I will keep this hand a hundred percent of the time. <laughs> oh my god. You guys are ridiculous. Shock arena, huh? Yeah, 
I'm pretty sure we're leading with Druid here, despite the fact that we have two red cards and a Rupture Spire in hand. Uh, I would actually love to get LASIK. I just haven't found... Like, it's just a... I think I have not committed to yet. How's it gonna be? Better? Oh my god, I'm a silver pig. Well, I wanted to tell you, but... this guy yeah so the thing about LASIK is that I have yet to hear anyone uh, who's been like I had LASIK and I wish I never did it everyone's like it was life changing when I actually top into the Pro Tour and I had that, that nice 10k windfall I was tempted to do it then but uh, yeah just never went through with it at the time It probably was a Third Eye Blind song. Uh, Brawl Bash is still, I think, significantly better than Boggart Brood. It doesn't die to shock, and it also gets an extra... Like, the potential to get an extra two points of damage in... Uh, like, just for the heck of it, just for funsies, is pretty good. Maybe you should find a date for LASIK the same thing. <laughs> How dare you, Matthew Ori? How dare you? All right. Well, we got a lot of cool lands here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know what? We got a Macaw Bolts in hand. Years of bad after effects. That's pretty rough. I mean, I like that even despite that, you do acknowledge that you are the rare 0.0001% though. Um, that's a good, that's a good outlook to have. To not have it like, a lot of people are like, you, you, you know, you see a guy on the, who gives the one star Amazon review because like, the packaging was damaged. And you're like, but that doesn't actually affect the product, right? I get you had a bad experience, but you have to accept that the product itself is not representative of your individual bad experience, right? And a lot of people do that. So it's a really good quality to not get, uh, to not get caught up in that and accept that like, Lazio is the Italian LASIK. Uh, Lazio. What are you going to do? Luminous bonds on my boy. Yeah, big surprise. Can I get a dragon, please? A Highland Glame is... A Highland Glame? Highland, Highland Glame is similar to a dragon. A Highland Glame! It's a little Jerry Lewis there. It's not great, but... The issue was inviting prominent Hearthstone servers to participate in an invitational tournament that paid out more than the last place finisher. Yep, I agree with you. I do agree with you there. I mean... I don't know. I do have opinions on it. I love Brian to death. Stan Sifka's great. Jason Chan is a cool guy. Um, the problem is these guys don't play magic, right? Like, they don't play regular magic. Sir React, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Mm 
More like Highland Lame. Yeah, you're right. Look at this idiot. Look at that idiot. Look at all the idiots. Boy, this game seems to be dragging on. Blanc the Child of Night, like you do. Maybe they will now, though, and that will give... Oh, they're not going to just start playing... Brian Kibler played Magic for 20 years. There's no way Brian's going to just start playing Magic because they invited him to this thing. Like, he makes bank playing Hearthstone. Same thing with Stan Sifka. Those guys are both prominent Hearthstone players. They do extremely well in their industries. And they have no incentive to come back to Magic just because Wizards invited him to the to, to do a draft. Like a weird beta draft. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, Brian was 100% to give viewers. 100%. So is Jason Chan. Like, Amaz is, like, extremely popular on Twitch. Yeah, Kibler and Sifka haven't played Magic for years. They have been in mostly, unless they get invited to a Magic event, uh, they have been exclusively Hearthstone. And doing quite well at it. I mean, the problem is like there's this fine line, right? On one side, you want to do what's best for your product. You want to be like, hey, let's make sure people people watch this event. We want to we want it to appeal to a large audience, not just Magic players, because you do want to bring in Hearthstone players, right? Um, well, they don't come back. That's the thing. They don't come back. They've just been playing Hearthstone exclusively. So, I mean, the thing is like, and you, oh, that's really good. <laughs> Okay, our deck's doing very well right now. I think that's actually just game. Let's just kill them. I'll finish this train of thought in one second. Uh... They got an inspired charge. We got a thorn hide wolves. Seems good. Um, who's a known cheater that got an invite? Huh. I don't actually know who was banned and got an invite to the silver showdown. Raynad wasn't invited, so I don't think we're talking about Raynad. Um, yeah, so there's two sides. Like I was, I was saying in the middle of that before before we attacked Vevictus as Madi. Um, there's there's the one side where you like you want your game to appeal to a wide audience. You want to bring in new players, so you you bring in these uh, enfranchised players from other games like Stan Sifker, or Jason Chan, or Kibler, and you're like, hey, let's appeal to, um, uh what do you call it this you know this wider audience and on the other side you have all these magic players who have been playing this game for years and they've been like they've been ingrained in this game and they support your product and they make your game look good and those guys didn't get invited you know and then hey, i can understand why it feels bad to those people because they're like well these guys never put anything into your game and you're giving them this huge prize whereas like we're here week in week out playing your game and supporting your product and making content and introducing people to the game and you just look us over and I, I understand both sides of that, you know. David Williams was banned for cheating, like, was it, like 15 years ago? I mean, and then since then, he's he's come in second at the World Series of Poker. Like, he has a daughter. He's a great ambassador for the game. I mean, like, I, you know, if you guys are, like... 
I don't understand the mentality of not letting people change. Like, I really don't, and I'm not an advocate for that at all. Like... Yeah, this was in 2000 David Williams was disqualified. That's 18 years ago, dude. Like... I mean... Seriously, like if we're not, if we're literally going to hold something that happened with someone 18 years ago in a game of magic, like, I don't know, man, like you, you have to be, fuck, you have to have a pristine life if, if something happened 18 years ago and you're still going to hold that against someone. David, and, and I know David personally, David is one of the nicest dudes you will meet. And it's not like, he's not like Alex Bertoncini who has like this re repetitive streak of cheating who like, you don't want to sit down against this player because five other people in the room have a story. Like, it's crazy that someone would bring that up. Like, that's really surreal to me. Like, this is a guy who has not like, also David Williams 18 years ago, David was probably like 16 years old, man. Like, if you're going to hold something against David Williams for something he did when he was 16, like, that's pretty ridiculous. I'm bottom. Uh, let's look. Okay, so seriously, let's not get onto the James Gunn thing because I I don't really want to get onto that. Uh, making a joke on Twitter ten years ago when you have like probably two hundred followers uh, is not advocating for pedophilia. Bottom line, advocating is not the word you you want to use here. That is not what he was doing. He was making a joke, and it was ten years ago. Uh, don't support any of the things he said. But uh, let's be clear about what did happen. And um, he's still a known cheater. We can all right, sure, man, whatever. Like that's a weird like. I guess so. It's it's unfortunate that uh, he's also a known food eater. I imagine he's also a known car driver. He's also a known you know grocery shopper. Like, it's funny that you choose the one thing he did 18 years ago to define him as a person. That's very strange to me. And it's actually something that's pretty unfortunate that people do, I think. Like, David Williams is thousands upon... Like, every human being, he, he has multiple facets of his personality. And if people aren't going to be held accountable for the past decisions, that should be a lot. He has been held accountable. He got banned. And he hasn't done it again. Like, that's literally holding someone accountable for it. That's so fun. That's unbelievable to me, man. What more do you want from someone when they made a mistake 18 years ago? Like, that's crazy, dude. To ignore, per to not, to not only ignore personal growth, but to like almost disallow it to someone. That's that's a level of like stubbornness that I I am actually surprised at. <sighs> we got some buddies over here. <sighs> Comments on Zach Jesse. Zach was actually a friend of mine. Uh, I didn't think he should have been banned from Magic. Uh, obviously, don't approve of anything Zach Jesse did. And uh, that was also like 10 years ago. And Zach Jesse settled this in a court of law. So, like, if that alone is not going to, like, so, like, I don't know what you expect, like, what you want. You literally want to say to someone, hey, you did something 10, 15, 20 years ago. Um, that's who you are for the rest of your life. And you'll never be forgiven for it ever again, ever in your entire life. You will never, you will never move past that. You will always be this thing. And it's, it's extremely insulting to these people. Like, I don't understand like what you get out of it to like, 
never let someone ever move past a mistake they made 10, 15 years ago. That's shocking to me. Like I, I don't know who 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 timed timed out Uranus. I I really would I'd like to have this discussion because I'd like to to change someone's mind here. But like that's just mind blowing to me that you're like you did something 15 years ago. You should still be punished for it today. I'm like we have courts of law to like determine these things, and they settled in a court. There was a court. He went to court. They settled. Like he did his time. Like. And then 15, 20 years later, you want to hold this dude in the court of public opinion. What? I don't get it. <laughs> like, Zach was a friend of mine. Oh, we should have totally equipped here, but I'm getting like I was gonna. I, I, my plan is Gravedigger, uh, Child of Night, and um, we should have totally equipped and attacked. But I think we're still okay. Like it just seems like you're content with like making sure no one ever. Yeah, Zach is Zach is banned is still in effect. <laughs> I mean, the dude can literally never the, the dude can never play magic again because of something he did 15 years ago. And that's that's mind-blowing to me. That is I can't even wrap my head around that. Rabbit bite is not combat damage. One, two, three, four, five, six. We could just play this guy. I think it's actually probably to just get in there with sword at this point. Uranus, I don't think either of them should be banned. That's the thing. Like, I just don't think... Like, David Williams was banned. He did his time. I mean, I can't say, like, hey, man, when you were six, when you were 16 years old, I'm going to, I'm going to look up, I don't know how old David is, actually. He's probably 36, 37. eighty. So, uh, she's 38. So, 18 years ago, he was 20 years old. Like, if I was like, hey, man, 18 years ago, when you were 20 years old, you made this mistake. Um, I, to still punish him someone 18 years later for something that, that they did like I can't understand it man and I say this knowing that I made mistakes in, in my life that I would not want held against me in 18 years like to deny me the chance of growth and moving past it is just But also, the Zach Jesse thing took place outside of the game before Zach Jesse even played Magic, theoretically. Like, Zach Jesse did something before the, the game of... He probably even knew of the game of Magic, which is pretty comical. And then he comes to this game, like, years and years later after this whole thing is behind him and he's moved on with his life. Like, um, I, I don't really want to talk about Zach Jesse. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Like I said, Zach was a good friend of mine before this happened. Um, I... I I barely keep in. You know the other thing. The other thing about Zach is that he was actually uh, banned from Facebook. Facebook banned him because uh, because of a policy they have, and 
So now he actually, I, the only way I can communicate with Zach is through email. And uh, can you really consider cheating a mistake? Yes. Anything you regret, you can consider a mistake, right? Like, just because it was deliberate at the time. We're not saying it's an accident. There's a difference between accident and mistake. Accident is unintentional. A mistake can be intentional. You just regret it afterwards. Like, don't confuse the two words. Do we deal seven, eight, nine? I think we could have actually won. So you block here, you take five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we could have won if we just played the ogre. Uh, I think we're still okay. I'm not going to play anything else here, though. So here's my concern. There are people... You know what? I'm not even going to... I don't even want to get into it right now. Yeah, this game could be ogre by now. Wow, smoky eyes. Quacker, you are killing it, buddy. Thank you. Mephisto, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. I'm trying to keep up with this chat because I like what's going on, but yeah, I think we should change the topic. I'm not really, uh, nope, not talking about pineapple on pizza because, uh, that is also unforgivable. That will do. All right. Our deck's cool. If there is such thing as people here. Waffles or pancakes? Uh, I like waffles better. I like waffles because they have a crispiness. Um, and they also have little pockets for your, for your syrup. My biggest problem with waffles is that I do want to butter them like pancakes. But it's much harder to butter a waffle because of the the obvious the the, the crevices. Oh, Biovisionary, welcome back. Glad you can make it. More like Twitch poop. That's rude. That's just rude. This hand is, this hand is poop. This hand is Twitch poop. Oh, I don't really like this hand. Buttered waffles are delicious, but like I said, it's really hard to get butter on the waffles. What kind of classic car are you? Uh, I, I, like, I like certain classic cars. I also like modern cars. I always wanted a, a, a vintage Chevelle. I just fill all the waffle pockets with butter. Dear God, John. Dear God. I'm going to mug in this hand. This is surprisingly better. It has all our colors. We trade. We basically traded a, uh, a abnormal endurance for five drop. Sure.
A hot waffle butters itself. Oh, that's isn't that a saying? Your mother would come in in the morning and be like, come on, time to get up. The hot waffle butters itself. And you're just like, I don't think that's a saying, mother. And she's like, get out of bed. It's time to wake up, you lazy shh. God, your mother's so aggressive. She really, she really laid down the law. Gravy or meat fat? Oh, we're going to go with neither. That's disgusting. All right, so we're, we're doing well. They play a thing, we kill it, then we get to go wolves. What about a pizza bagel on top of a large slice of pineapple? Is that okay? Nope. See, this is... Uranus, this is the most controversial thing you've said in the chat. So I'm going to... Uh, you're you're looking at a you're looking at a timeout, buddy. Yeah, that's fine. Anybody got time for that? Give me a good four drop, like a brawl ogre. Okay, mountain is good too. Thank you. Oh God, what about here comes case. When I was a kid, I didn't really like pancakes or waffles, and I thought I was really weird because everyone loved them. About five years ago, I had pancakes without buttering them, and I love them. So waffles being hard to butter isn't a problem. Wow. Do you still not like the butter on them, though? Fresh bread. That's what you're, <laughs> That's what you're coming at me with, Case? And, and grilled pineapple separate but eaten in the same bites? Yeah, that actually sounds pretty good. I love pineapple. And I love pineapple upside down cake, so I don't have a problem with bread and pineapple. What I have a problem with is pineapple and bread. That's good. And then if you add cheese and tomato sauce, that's where it gets weird to me. And I'm just like, I'm not in. Oh, maybe we can get a drunk Mike stream soon. Mike is actually off on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I wonder if I can convince him to do a drunk Mike stream. Wow. Fashion related to the party, Rejuvenator. Tomato and pineapple are both fruits. That doesn't... That has nothing to do with anything. That does not mean they're just going to naturally go together. What if you just add cheese to the pineapple and bread? Still nope. Maple hot sauce gravy. You guys are... This is... Cheese and apple pie used to be common, and I every time I see that, I am so weirded out by it. It is disconcerting how weird it is that that cheese uh, on apple pie is a thing. I, I'm like, I try to understand it. I do not. Come on, don't be vivacious as Madi in these five. Epicure, Gravedigger. Uh, yeah, that's actually not terrible. Cheddar on top of apple pie is the best way to have it? Oh, God, the foamy one. No, why are you being this way? Hey, look that anticipate we knew you had. Boo -doo -doo -boo -doo 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 -doo. Aliens, I, I actually do believe aliens are real. I think the odds of us being the only uh, advanced civilization in the in the universe is slim. Uh, I'm not saying that fruit and cheese platters are a sin. I'm saying if I have a fruit and cheese platter, I'm not going to take a piece of cheese and put a piece of fruit on it and eat them together. I'm not going to be like, oh, here, me put a grape and a piece of cheese together and eat that together. I will have a bite of cheese. I will swallow it. I'll have a bite of fruit. I'll swallow that. And then I'll have a bite of cheese. I'm not eating these things together. I'm not combining these two flavors. Oh, I like that a lot. Raw herring with chopped onions. Nope. Not doing that. <laughs> just... 
Yeah, I know chefs do it. I know chefs combine all kinds of flavors. I'm just saying personally, I don't enjoy it. I'm not like criticizing these things. Give me them creds. Oh, this is this is nice. Let's play old one threeums. Predict any bands in modern? Not really. I mean, maybe something from um, maybe something from Ironworks. What was the deck that uh, what did the winning team have? What were they playing? Do I eat fruit in my salad? I do not. Unless it's a fruit salad, which is entirely... No, once you start putting strawberries and grapes and raisins in salad, I'm just, like, turned off. I'm like, I like a savory salad. Uh, possibility that aliens or Earth just avoiding humans. They w To what end? Like, why would they be hiding? I feel like if there was an alien civilization that's, that's uh, advanced enough to come to Earth and to hide among us, once you get to that point, you just have no incentive to actually hide among us. You can pretty much get any information you want already, so. Strawberries on pizza. Nope. By expressing your opinions of cheese, you're practicing hate speech against the cheese and fruit race. The bigotry shouldn't be allowed, but I'm a fan of those races. Oh, man. I done messed up. I guess you can stay home. Are they gonna are they gonna uncomfortable chill us again? I have become uncomfortably chilled. That's from Pink Floyd. You guys familiar with Pink Floyd? Oh my god. That's aggressive, dude. Shock. Is this Trump Blast time? Are we getting Trump Blast out of the game? Thunder's happening, guys. Ah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I guess we're dead if they have Trumpet Blast. Which they're not... Oh, they're just stealing our guy. Huh. This is eight. So we're not dead. Unless they have Shock. Which they did not. So now we're dead. Well, that was something. Now I'm wishing I sacked the Highland game instead of the Rejuvenator. I agree with you. I think if aliens came here, they'd be like, oh, a pineapple on pizza, huh? Well, this planet's full of morons. I'm out. I'm going to bring in a duress because it feels like you should not have the things that you have. Other than that, your creatures suck. Oh, no, Hunter's getting real scared, guys. He's not having a good time. He's actually very scared. That's just like your opinion, man. How dare you? How dare you talk to me like facts are not my facts. My opinions are not facts. I'm going to keep this hand. If we hit lands, we got good curve. Oh, got a good curve. Highland games. I'm going to play all those Highland games. All right, good games, ladies and gentlemen. Good game. Why would you check the? Why would you check the stipulation in an M nineteen draft? That's very strange. 
Can you guys hear him? Can you guys hear him panting in the background? Give me a forest off the top. I don't think that's a lot to ask for. Apparently it was. All right. Well, I'm going to do this because I feel like we're going to get to a point where we just can't keep this up anymore. All right. Sleep and sift. Sleep and sift and sleep and sift. And... This is great because it actually helps your Enigma Drake next turn. I'm pretty sure we're just dead here. Um, next turn, they can do any one of these three. Probably hostile. They attack for five. Um, Volley Veteran kills our Highland game. Enigma Drake is already... They can also just play the other one of the other four drops. I have to take sleep because it wins games, but Sift is drawing you infinite cards, so. Play your island. Got it. Yeah, my calendar is also not updated, guys, so. What are you guys looking for with the calendar? What are you guys trying to find out? I could just tell you. Can I do one draft where I literally don't lose a match to friggin' Mana Screw? Like, just once. Like, I, I feel like... <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not saying that I'm, like, the best in this format or anything like that. But I feel like our decks are good enough that I would win every one of these drafts if I didn't get mana screwed. It's it's phenomenal. Like the point out there, professional magic player switched out. <laughs> Believe me, it's very tempting. But the problem with that is my audience is mostly magic, so it's really hard for me to, like, switch to Hearthstone because, like, it's really rough. Oh, I think you can still complain. Hope you don't have Mighty Leap. We did it, boys. Don't whiff. Okay, you did it. Uh, second black or second green? I don't think it really matters. We do have more black cards. We'll just get the second black. Oh, it is raining, boys. Like you do. Um, I'll just take four. You just block these guys next turn profitably. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Ugh, that's frustrating. I really didn't want to play this this turn. I wanted to play uh, Brawl Bash Ogre, but... Well, I guess that's what you gotta do. Yeah, I figured, yeah, I think most people would rather watch me play MTG. Like, I, I know because I play MTG and I get uh, decent YouTube YouTube viewers and Twitch viewers, but then I play Hearthstone and I get like a quarter of that, which is really frustrating because I think there's more opportunities for me in other games like Elder Scrolls Legends and Hearthstone. I think there are more opportunities. The ceiling for me is higher in those games. Um, whereas, but I'm kind of locked into magic is the problem. I open the window. The competition will... Exactly. Like, the competition will, would keep my views down. I agree with you completely. Yep. I had a feeling. I've got a feeling. A feeling deep inside. One, two, three, four. Ogre. Highlandy. It actually isn't raining yet. It's just got that super... Uh, do you think it's worth playing 18 lands even with Rejuvenator just because you filter so many cards to the bottom anyway? Um, maybe. I'm actually lower on Rejuvenator than I used to be. I think cards like Manolith are actually better because I have whiffed with Rejuvenator quite a few times. Um, so no, I don't think that's out of the question, actually. Uh, 
Oh, that was a good draw. Or do I just want to kill this? I mean, you don't have any other knights, so I don't actually care about that. I'll be honest. Doesn't have first strike, right? Yeah, this seems fine. I will kill both of these if you'd like. Actually, we'll sack this guy. The reason being, we have Gravedigger in hand, so I'd like to be able to get that dude back with a Gravedigger. This is an easy block, but we still get seven in. Uh, I have not thought about going to Arena because I'd really rather not spend uh, the entire amount of money that I've input on Magic the Gathering on Arena. Um, I also can't play things like Modern in Arena. I also don't like the draft format where you draft against non-human beings. And also I just could care less about Arena to be quite honest. Uh, do me a favor and don't use... Uh, don't use gay as a pejorative. Like, that's really not okay. Not a huge deal, Zichi. Just, uh, just a personal preference of mine. Like, I just think this is a more accurate representation of magic for me. Um, I have, I mean, I don't discount Arena. Um as a format as a game like as a as a as a way to play magic the gathering i just think this is more effective for now because like you can't you can't play things like um like older formats you know you're limited to standard and like i'd have to build my collection up from the ground and it's so new and it's still in like it's still kind of in beta it still is in beta right like that like a lot of the decks you're facing in the meta game are completely unrefined because, oh, I can't get three copies of Scarab God and four copies of Gear Hulk or this and that and this. Um, Zichi, no big deal. No, not offended at all. Appreciate it. I just don't, I just don't want people to get in the habit of like, yeah, you, no big deal, dude. Appreciate it. Thank you for understanding. Um, oh, don't get me started on the, I'll spend my money on actual cards. Don't get me started on that. So, so, okay, anyone who thinks that digital cards are not actual cards, um, when you watch a movie on Netflix, is that an actual movie? Or is that a, is that not an actual movie? Uh, if I was gonna play Eternal, I would just play I would just play other games because I have more connections in those games. Like I have more friends and connections in Hearthstone. I have more friends and connections in Elder Scrolls Legends. So I would I would just play those two. Two hundred plus mana by the end of his turn. Like how would you even do that? Because I feel like you'd run out of time, right? That's an interesting. Huh. And we're just going to keep equipping this guy. This is a good trade. I'll trade the info. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't foresee wizards going under. Like that's some kind of that's some real doomsday, that's some real like uh, doomsday prepper 
like situation where I'm like, yeah, what if Wizards goes under? Well, okay, in 40 years, if Wizards goes under and you're like 65 years old and you can't play with your Magic the Gathering cards, you probably have bigger concerns. Wizards is probably not going anywhere in the near future. If Wizards goes under, I can guarantee you Magic is not going to last that much longer when there's no new sets being produced. I mean, I will I will bet money that games live and die. I will put money on, on the fact that games live and die uh, based on their liquidity. Like... If a game is getting a lot of coverage, if a game is, has a lot of prominent personalities, if a game has a lot of exposure, if a game has a lot of high-profile tournaments, these are the things that keep games alive. It's this constant interest. You have to keep building interest. Because you have so many options for entertainment in, in 2018 that, like, if Magic isn't changing every three months, if Magic isn't holding your interest with the, with the big tournament every every month or so. Oh, I love this because we actually get the um, we actually get the token. So I don't think they know that. Yeah, that's pretty good. So four, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, we'll just take seven here. Yeah, I just don't think that's a selling point for like dismissing. I, I, yeah, I don't think that's a selling point for dismissing digital things. You know what I mean? Uh, I play more in person with friends than online. That's a totally that's a totally reasonable stance. I get that 100%. Um, but to dismiss them and be like, I, I hate when people call them a real card. I'll, I'll take real cards. or Because it's dismissive of digital things. And like, I'll be honest with you, I haven't listened to a physical CD in 20 years. I haven't watched a physical... I haven't taken a physical movie out of a DVD player and put it in my, in my DVD player in probably 15 years, right? Like... Everything is digital. And if we don't actually acknowledge that digital things are real things, it's very weird. It's a very dismissive uh it's a very dismissive way to look at technology. Like I can I play more magic online than I do paper magic. And um I actually like the fact that I can just play, I can I can take out my phone at any place, literally the bathroom, the library, the restaurant, and play a game of Hearthstone or a game of Elder Scrolls Legends. Uh, that's huge. That's huge. Like, even if you're with your friends, if I'm with my, with my friends at a restaurant eating food, I can still play, you know, hypothetically speaking, MTG Arena, right? So you can technically get more use out of Arena than you could have paper cards, you know, con you know, uh, assuming that Wizards of the Coast is still around. So I will defend uh, digital things being real things. Uh, with my last breath. Well, I don't need to make the decision between playing physical or paper. Yes, let's not get into the MTG headquarters thing. That is not uh, preferred. PC Hungry Howie's bathroom sounds like a pretty good one. Uh, how long do you think MTG will be around? At least several years.
and reason being like I keep talking I've talked about this before but like it's gonna take a good amount of time uh to get all of the cards that you need on MTG Arena all the legacy cards the vintage cards the modern cards uh it's gonna take a while to set up a cube which is something Magic Online can do so I mean there's a lot of things that you're like I like this because we can keep up Endurance and we can keep up Electrify here. Yeah, but like saying I can't feel all these zeros and ones, you can't feel a movie on Netflix, right? Like, you can't feel a song in your iPad, you know what I mean? Like, it's just... Like equating something that that equating value to you with being able to hold it is just a weird thing in in 2018. Passive and active forms of media? thats I don't think that's necessarily true. The point of Magic the Gathering is to play a game. I'm playing a game of Magic the Gathering right now, and I have, I have hell, I have, I cannot, I haven't felt a single zero or a one, right? I haven't felt a single card in my hand. I haven't had any tangible, tactile feel in my hand, and I'm, I'm playing the same game of Magic as I would if I was playing it in paper, right? Like, I mean, I don't think I'm, I don't think it's an active versus a passive, Or even if it is, like, even if that's, re like, I don't think that's relevant. Go to the graveyard. Yep, you got it. concede <laughs> oh that's that's good that's good I like it I'm a fan well they can either take this or not it's up to them hmm. grave digger can you dig my grave? Yeah, that's fine. Luminous bonds. Ogre on top. Swamp on top. Okay. Well, we're going to keep this swamp in hand in case we want to discard it to Macabre Waltz. That's a good card. Well, they have to block here. If they don't, they did. I guess we should have attacked with Rejuvenator too. But now we're just like, got this graveyard recursion going on here. It's pretty solid. Sure.
Welp, that's pretty good. Oh, the old trauma blast. All right. On that note, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully the conversation in this particular draft did not get too heated. It didn't get too aggressive. Thank you guys so much uh, for the support. Really appreciate it. You can check out my Twitch profile and the uh, Patreon page in the description below. Smash those like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you guys next time.